So I'm sorry I don't, do not have the verses for the Bible study today on the computer, so you can just take the words off of there, my brother, and leave the Bible up there. So you'll need to get your Bibles out and uh, turn to 1 John with me. 1 John chapter 1. We're going to be talking about relationships today. How important um, that we build them and how we go about becoming closer to those that we are how we're becoming closer with those that all right praise the lord and father i lift up to you our time together god and pray that you would fill our souls god and that that lord this the atmosphere here would just be saturated with your love for us saturated god with your presence Holy Spirit, move in our minds. In Jesus' name, amen. Relationships. Today's message is entitled, God is Love. We really can have a living, breathing relationship with God the Father and with Jesus Christ. And in 1 John chapter 1, we learn some truths about that. When you and I have a relationship with someone close like a father would have with his son there is the the possibility of the relationship becoming difficult between the father and the son when the son is estranged from the father it's very very difficult there is very little love that can be compared with the love that is between a father and a son. A father will do all that he can do to help his son become successful. He'll overlook a lot of things, too. Paul Silway said we must remember, though, that as sons and daughters of God, we are God's sons, not because of how good we are, but because of how good God is. And no greater love you're going to find than between a father and a son. As we are trying to make uh, amends, possibly, with our son, maybe with our father, maybe we're the son that has been estranged from our dad. Lots of things come to our minds. We, we can have... Uh, separation that he's not ever going to forgive us or that the relationship is never going to be quite the same and we can take that relationship that we have with our earthly father our earthly sons and sometimes we can translate that into our relationship with our heavenly father we need to know though why God is love. Why is he love? The Bible says in, in 1 John, in 1 John chapter, chapter 4, in 1 John chapter 4, the Bible says that God is love. In 1 John chapter 4, 8. That he is actually in his character within himself love. In 1 John chapter Chapter 4, verse 7 and 8, the Bible says, Beloved, let us love one another, for, for love is of God, and everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. He who does not love does not know God, for God is love. So this relationship that we have with God as God being love translates into the love relationship that we have with other people. But we must know how it is that God is love within himself. If you turn your Bibles back over to 1 John chapter 1, in verse 1, the Bible says that which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked upon and our hands have handled concerning the word of life. John is describing God 
from the very beginning. Now, this is before the creation. That way back in the beginning, he has heard this relationship that we can have with God. He has seen it with his own eyes. He's looked upon it with his, with his own life. And he has actually handled this love concerning the word of life. And this life was manifested. It was shown to us. It was brought before him physically. And we have seen this relationship. We bear witness with this relationship and declare to you that eternal life which was with the Father and was manifested to us. This eternal relationship then that Jesus has with his heavenly Father was an eternal one way before the creation. And this relationship was with the Father. So this is showing us that Jesus Christ is not the Father, and the Father is not Jesus Christ. Though they were both in eternity past, before anything was created. Jesus is called eternal life in John 5, 26, for as the Father has life in himself, so he has granted the Son to have life in himself. This is the relationship that the Father has with Jesus Christ. In John 5, in, in, um, in John 14, 6, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no one comes to the Father except through me. This is the relationship that Jesus has with his heavenly Father. That it's, it's eternal. It was way in the, in the past, before all creation. And Jesus' relationship with the Father in, seven, in John 17, 24 says this, Father, I desire that they also whom you gave me may be with me where I am, that I may behold, that they may behold my glory, which you have given me, for you love me before the foundation of the world. Jesus is saying that this is the relationship that I want to have with people. I want people to have the same relationship that I have with you. I want to bring them into that. The question is then, what is that relationship that Jesus has with the Father? In Micah 5, 2, the Bible says, But you, Bethlehem, Ephraim, though you are little among the thousands of Judah, yet out of you shall come forth to me the one to be ruler in Israel, whose going forth are from old, from everlasting. Jesus Christ, eternal. The Father, eternal. Both of them one, though they are separate. The Bible again says in 1 John 4, 8, that God is love. He is love. In Micah 5, 2, we just learned that, that God is eternal. That before anything was created, God was there. Though just logic will show you that love without an expression or love isolated by itself is meaningless. If there is love, but there is nowhere for love to go, then there is no love there. For love stifled all on its own in a vacuum is not love at all. It's just a word. Love needs an object for love. So how is it that God is love, but there was no one there in eternity past to love? Nobody was created. There weren't any angels. There were no animals. There, there was nothing. It was just God. The Father loves the Son. The Son loves the Father. The Holy Spirit loves Jesus. The Holy Spirit loves the Father. There is this expression of love that is within God and the Godhead that was a love that God wants to bring into our lives, the same love that God has within himself. Before anything was created, the only love in the universe was between God himself, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Genesis 1.1 says this, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. 
Now, this statement in Hebrew is split up into three different sections. The first section is, in the beginning, God. Period. So, in the beginning, the only thing there was God. And then what did God do? God created. And what did he create? He created the heavens and the earth. So, way back before all this had happened, here is God within himself, being love and loving God within himself, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Listen to what Matthew 28, 19 has to say about this subject of the Trinity. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. To baptize souls into the name of who God is. And our subject today is about God being love, being baptized into the very character of who God is in totality. 2 Corinthians 13, 14 says this, the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. That this relationship would be with us, each one of us, this depth of love that God has within himself. 1 Peter 1, 2 says this, elect according to the foreknowledge of God the Father in sanctification of the Spirit for obedience and sprinkling of the blood of Jesus Christ, grace to you and be, peace be multiplied. That God the Father and the sanctification of the Holy Spirit, the working of God within the believer, what God is showing us today on the very first day of 2017 is that he is inviting us into this eternal relationship with himself. 1 John 1, 3, our very next verse says this, That which you have seen and heard we declare to you that you also may have fellowship with us. And truly, our fellowship is with the Father and with His Son, Jesus Christ. Now, this is the key to how God is loving within Himself. The word for fellowship is the word koinonia. Koinonia is a word that means a sharing, a communion, a common bond in life. It's a coming together. It speaks of living, breathing, sharing, loving, having a relationship like that with another person. It's koinonia. The Greek word koinonia is derived from a word in Greek called kenos, which very literally means common in the sense of being shared by all. Now, this koinonia fellowship this koinonia fellowship, my friends, does not always take place when we come together. We can come together and not share with one another the depths of our lives. We can come together and talk with each other and spend time with one another and not experience each other at all. We can be two ships passing in the night, so to speak. But when true koinonia is taking place, it's a sharing of the intimacy within the one person with the other. Acts 2.44 says this, Now all who believed were together and had all things in common and sold their possessions and goods and divided them among all as anyone had need. Now this word common there is the word koinonia. It's the word that when everybody came together that they shared with one another what they had. When we come together and fellowship before church, when we come after church and then we don't, we, don't, uh, we don't just walk out, but we sit and talk with one another. It doesn't matter how deep it is. We talk with each other. We share with one another. You've heard, it, you've heard people ask you the question, how are you doing? Or maybe you've asked somebody that question and then they want to be kind of snotty about it. 
And then they say something like, are you sure you want to hear how I'm doing? Because we just say that word, how are you doing, but we really don't mean it. We're just saying it. We're saying it because it's polite. But when you say that to someone, how are you doing, and you, the object of that is to have koinonia fellowship with someone, then you genuinely are interested. This word, koinonia, then, why is it so important? Why is it so important that we understand this concept? See, we can do it or we don't have to do it. And we can have koinonia with God or not too. God has given us this incredible gift that as the relationship that he has within himself, that he has given us the opportunity to have the same depths of relationship that Jesus Christ has with his heavenly father. Jesus said that all that the father has is mine. That koinonia fellowship that I have been brought into then is, is then declaring to me that all that the Father has is for me too. The love that He has for me. The resources that He has for me. Verse 4 then goes on to say in 1 John chapter 1, And these things we write to you that your joy may be full. Why is koinonia so important? So that your joy will be full. We were not created to be alone. In Russia, there was a time when um, orphans were, um, were not being taken care of. There were so many of them. And they were put into a crib and taken care of with their physical needs. But there were so many of them, they couldn't be touched. They couldn't be held. And physically, physically their brains were small. If you take an animal, like a monkey, and you put him into a cage all by himself and just give him all his physical needs, but you do not put him in with other monkeys, same thing happens. And he never grows out of it. We were created to have this koinonia with other people. We were created to have this koinonia with God, that our joy would be full, that we would be experiencing life in the fullest. We are individually brought into this koinonia love relationship with the Godhead, but that is not that it happens just because God has made it possible for us. Just like it doesn't necessarily happen if we do it with each other. Just because it's available doesn't mean that you are enjoying it. Just because after church or during our fellowship time or yet tomorrow when, when you have uh, time on your own, that the koinonia fellowship is available for, the, for you does not mean that you are going to be enjoying it because you're not going after it. They... There's something about koinonia that is really, really important. There's a responsibility that we have with each other that the koinonia goes both ways. That the love, you see, goes both ways. Think about this. You're having koinonia fellowship with God and then God turns around to you and bags on you for all the things that you've done wrong. Is that what God does? So I'm going to have koinonia fellowship with another person, but then they start, then I share with them the depths of my heart and they bag on me for all, all the things that I've done wrong. Is that God's koinonia? It's not. That's not the koinonia that I've drawn from the Father. That is a relationship that's birthed here on earth, that is sensual, that is, um, that is self-centered, that isn't love at all. That isn't love. Is that the kind of love that, the, that, that Jesus has with his father? That the father is going to be bagging on the son and telling him how terrible he is? No. Remember what Jesus, when Jesus was baptized, remember, the very, remember what G, the father said to everyone, for everyone to hear, this is my son in whom I am well pleased. This is the koinonia relationship that we have with our heavenly father. 
And we must develop this koinonia with our Heavenly Father to understand what it is to have koinonia with other people and to enjoy that and to be responsible in loving other people when we come before them for this type of relationship. John 17, 24 says this, Father, I desire that they also whom you gave me may be with me where I am. Where is Jesus at? With the Father. Where is Jesus at? He's God. Where is this relationship at? Within his own character, within his being. He is three distinct personalities in one. And they are all loving one another in koinonia. That everything the Father has, the Son has. Everything the Holy Spirit has, the Father has. Everything the Son has, the Holy Spirit has. They are all sharing with each other everything about who they are. If you want to know who the Father is, take a look at Jesus. If you'd like to know the character of the Holy Spirit, look at the Father. If you really want to know what the Father is all about, look at Jesus. They all share each other's character, but they're different. And now God wants to, God is saying to us, I want to bring you into that. I want to bring you into that intimacy that I have within myself. And not only that, but this love now is to be brought into the lives of other people. Let me read to you right from the beginning what we had, what we had, um, what we had, had read there in 1 John 4, 7. Beloved, that's us, let us love one another. Let us love the koinonia love relationship with each other. Why? For God is love. If we are going into koinonia fellowship with God, then we must be loving each other with that same koinonia or we don't understand it. You see, if I'm going and I'm having a disconnect of koinonia with my brother, yet I'm thinking I'm, ha- I'm developing that same exact thing I'm doing with somebody else, I'm doing with God, it is not the koinonia that God wants. But when I begin to see the relationship that I have with the Father, and it's open, and He's not angry at me, and I can talk with Him, and He knows my heart, He wants to share His heart with me, and then my soul is being rejuvenated in that. And then I'm going and having that same relationship with others. Listen, everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. Why? He who does not love does not know God, for God is love. He who does not koinonia love other people does not understand the koinonia love with their Heavenly Father, and they're not having it. They're not coming before God with that. The relationship between God and all believers is that they have all things in common with their Heavenly Father. All the resources of each person in the Trinity are held in common with each other and given to each individual believer, all of us. This is the great prize. This is the wonderful prize. The wonderful prize. That we can have koinonia fellowship with our Heavenly Father. This is the great prize. And we can have koinonia of fellowship with another human being. Do you know that that's all that humanity wants? To have a relationship with another human being. It doesn't matter. If you only have one, you're rich. You realize that? When you have a relationship with one other human being, that's the kind of relationship you have with God, you don't need anything else. That is why it is vitally important that if you're going to have quantity of fellowship with another human being, you do not marry anybody that does not have quantity of fellowship with your Heavenly Father. Because you will never, ever have the same relationship with your spouse you have with your Heavenly Father. It will never happen. Because they do not know the Heavenly Father. They do not have a relationship with your Heavenly Father. They are not having koinonia with your Heavenly Father. And now you're trying to have koinonia with someone who does not know God. How are they going to relate back to you? Worldly. They're going to be giving to you everything that that God is saying, no, that isn't koinonia. No, no, no. 
And people that just disregard this are in for a world of pain and hurt. They will never, ever, ever know the depth of the love of their Heavenly Father because they are putting a damper on it because they went off and married without regarding the warning. This is the great prize, or quantity of fellowship with God and with each other. Now Jesus has invited us to address God then as our Heavenly Father, just like He does. You see, there are people that have a koinonia relationship with their Heavenly Father and this relationship now has, has developed in my life and I've seen it. I have seen it. I've felt it out of that man. I know. I know that he is in fellowship with the Heavenly Father. And the love that I've received from that man is the koinonia fellowship that is empowered by the Holy Spirit and I feel it. And because of that, He's invited to have koinonia fellowship with my wife. To have an intimacy of relationship with my wife. And I open it up and I'm okay. The Father wants, Father, Jesus is saying, I want you. See, that, that's, that, that, that's a gift, by the way, because I don't, I don't do that for anybody. I don't trust anybody like that. No way. Jesus is saying, look, I trust you. I want you to have this relationship with my Heavenly Father. I want you to have the depths of relationship that I have with my Heavenly Father. I want you to call Him Father. It'd be like me saying to another man, I want you to call her your wife. That won't happen. But it's like that. The depths of relationship that I have with my wife, it's pretty deep. And the depths of relationship that I have with, my, with Jesus and His Heavenly Father is much deeper than I have with my wife. Much deeper. It's a relationship that Jesus is saying in Matthew chapter 6, verse 9, in this manner, therefore pray, our Heavenly Father, our Father in Heaven, hallowed be Your name. This is where God wants us to go. This is the koinonia that Jesus is inviting us to experience. That Jesus Christ is opening up for us because of his sacrifice for my sin. Because of that, now I have this kind of relationship with the Father. Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. You're holy. Look, look, at, look at how the koinonia is happening right here. I'm coming into a relationship with God on His terms. I am, I'm coming to Him, separating myself from the world and its lust and its, and, and its power and, and, its, and its greed and its pride and, and all of the way that I'm relating my relationships and how the, all that works in my flesh. And now I'm breaking away from that and I'm saying, God, my heavenly Father, and you're holy, and you're bringing me into that holiness, into that relationship with you. Now, doesn't it just make sense that your kingdom come and your will be done here on earth as it is in heaven? That's the responsibility that you have in developing your koinonia relationship with the Father. Because if you're walking contrary to his will, if you're walking in sensuality, if you're walking in drunkenness, if you're walking in pride and, and you're walking as a lifestyle in sin, you don't, you're not going to God as your Heavenly Father and saying He's holy and walking with all of that into a relationship with God. God won't have it. As much as I won't have it or you won't have it in, in somebody coming up to you and saying, I want quantity of fellowship and they're bringing all their garbage into your life. Saying, I love you, let's go party. No, thank you. It, it's just the same thing. Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your rule here, your will be done on earth 
in my world, in my day, and how I'm living at, at, on earth as it is in heaven. What's happening in heaven when Jesus says, when God says something to the angels, don't they just go off and do it? Absolutely. Even Satan himself, when Satan himself, when God goes before Satan and says, Satan, you will not do this, what does Satan do? Doesn't do that. God wants us to have that kind of relationship with him, and it starts just with this beautiful word called koinonia. It's a beautiful thing. It's intimacy. It's intimacy between you and your heavenly Father. Give us this day our daily bread. God is wanting to take care of you. Just like our relationship with each other. The reason why we are, we are close to each other, the reason why we have this kind of fellowship with one another is to help each other. Remember in Acts, everything was in common. Everybody had. When we come here on Wednesday nights for our, our, our Bible study dinner, doesn't everybody bring something? Are we all coming together and helping? Not one person doing it but everybody working together and the love that is between us all, it's all right there. Forgive us our debts as we forgive those who have trespassed against us. Forgive us our debts. Forgive us, God, our sin. Forgive me, Lord, for those areas of my life that has broken the koinonia fellowship between me and you. This, this koinonia fellowship then is, is, is brought right back when you repent. When you go to God and you repent of your sin, he is faithful and just to forgive you of your sin and cleanse you from all unrighteousness and bring you right back into that koinonia fellowship. But look at what the Bible says here, that not only is the relationship between me and God needing to be mended, but also with those around me. Forgive us our debts, just like we forgive those around us that have sinned against us, that have broken off koinonia fellowship with us, that we forgive them. Because it's all in one pizza pie. We are either doing it or we're not doing it. You can't go and have bitterness towards your brother or your sister, not love them, not forgive them, and have that not leach off into your relationship with God. You want to see how a relationship is going on with a human being. Look at how they're treating other people. Look at how they talk to other people. And don't be fooled that a person that is bitter and angry and filled with strife towards other people has the same attitude towards God. Their koinonia is not there. You see, koinonia is there. And you got it. You just let it go. It's everywhere. You have koinonia in connecting with other people and God. We are wanting to know God in koinonia. And when we do, it translates off into our koinonia with others. Do not lead us into temptation. And our relationship with God and with other, other people is no different. That we are not to lead other people into temptation. We are not to be going and telling other people that, yes, um, it's okay that we go do this together. When it is absolutely not part of the koinonia relationship with God. I remember one time... Pastor Ernie DeLoach was telling me as he was uh, pastoring a church in the Bahamas that a woman came up to him and uh, was crying because she was pregnant. And she was crying because a pastor had told her that sleeping with him was God's will. And came up to him and says, is that God's will that I do that? And he says, I'm sorry, that's not, that's not God's will. If a man comes up to you and says, or a woman comes up to you and says, I want you to go do that, is that what God is asking you to do with koinonia with God? No, not at all. Lead us not into temptation means just that. We have a responsibility, guys and gals. We do. That we're not leading others into temptation. We're not doing it. Now the world, you know, does what it does. Fine. You know, when I go to the gym, you know what I do? I, I leave my, my glasses in the truck. Just like that. You guys are fuzzy right now. You know, I leave them in the truck. I don't need all that. You know, whatever. But I tell you what, I'm not going into the gym in a Speedo either. I'm not doing it. It's, and people do that. They're tempting, they're tempting, they're tempting. Or tempting someone to get drunk. Or tempting them with drugs. Tempting them with sex. Tempting them with all this stuff. 
we god doesn't do that god is not tempting us the devil is tempting us and the world filled in the other people is wanting to draw us away but when we have this koinonia fellowship with god oh, that old tempter he's gone he ain't getting me. I'm leaving my glasses in the truck. I'm not doing that. No way. Father, I want this koinonia with you. Lord, uh, don't lead me into temptation. Don't. But deliver me from what? From the evil one. Because it is him that is wanting to destroy the koinonia between you and God. He wants to destroy it. And it ain't that hard. Isn't that sick? It's not too hard to destroy the koinonia between you and God. All he has to do is put that one stupid thing in front of you and off you go. Like my dog Joe after a dead carcass on the road. And there we are, chewing on the asphalt. It just happens. But when we start off our relationship with God and say, God, you're my heavenly father. You're holy. Your will be done here on earth just like it is in heaven, my God, you're my provider. Everything I need, you're going to be bringing to me. And God, all that stuff that I think that I need, I repent of. I'm just going to repent of it. Lead me not into temptation, but deliver me from the evil one. Why? For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. It is eternal, guys. This koinonia that we have with God is forever. And he wants us to enjoy this eternal relationship right now and to break away from every evil thing that we're doing. Everything. That nothing that we are doing would be displeasing to God. That we repent of every single sin. That there is nothing that is separating us from our Heavenly Father. If we do not, then we are fooling ourselves. And the love of God is not in us. It's not. We really can have a living, breathing relationship with God. We can. He can not only be our Savior, but He can be our closest friend, our greatest relationship. But we have got to cultivate it. If we think we're going to go off and keep on sinning the way we are, that will never happen. And we're walking in here, and nothing is going to change. And you're actually being a problem with those that are wanting to do this. You are. You're a stumbling block if you don't do this. Jesus said, woe to you that stumbled one of my little babies with all this stuff of pulling my children away from koinonia with me. I tell you what, if a man were to come to me and my son when he was five years old, whether he's 20 now, even if he does it right now, and he tries to break a relationship between me and my son, then what do you think I'm going to do? You think, I'm going to sit there? How about my wife? If a man comes up and tries to, tries to move in between my wife and I, you think I'm going to sit there and let it happen? You think? Think again. And our Heavenly Father is even grander than that. It's koinonia that is within himself. I don't know if you can really get a hold of the, that picture of the koinonia within God himself. It's perfect. And he is bringing, he brings us into this relationship with him. It's bizarre to me. I just am, I'm awestruck by it. You and I are invited to experience this for ourselves. The same relationship that God has with himself can be with you and I. Imagine what life would be like. Imagine what your life, what my life would be like. If on a daily basis I am developing koinonia, between me and God every day. Get the, get the Lord's Prayer out and pray it. You're my Heavenly Father. It's koinonia. You're putting it into practice. Think about what your life will be like. Think about what your relationships will be like when you learn how to develop koinonia with others that have koinonia with the Father and break away from every intimate relationship with any human being that does not have that koinonia with the Heavenly Father. Break it off. I'm just, just saying. <laughs> I'm just saying. You are in for a long, hard road if you don't. But, no, listen. 
If you choose to do that, like a lot of people do, I'm still here for you. In fact, you're going to need me a lot more than the two people that have koinonia. Think about it. You have two people with koinonia coming into church, and there they are, a man and a woman together, like Miss Patty and I. When we come together and we both had koinonia with each other, that was an eternal relationship. It was awesome. And uh, now, now you have this other couple, and uh, let me see, there's been a few of them. Well, just picture in your mind, this other couple that they do not have koinonia, or one has koinonia and one does not, and they get, oh yeah, I got them in my mind, and they come together and they don't have the koinonia with God together, and then they go off and start sinning. What is going to happen with that relationship? What do you think? Yeah. Do you think that the relationship that's filled with koinonia is going to need the same kind of counsel than the relationship that does not have koinonia? Think again. That relationship is, uh, is, is hell on wheels. You don't think? Oh, anybody can testify to that? Uh-huh. Y'all, y'all just can tell me, yeah, say amen, say something to me. I need to turn the AC down. You got to get colder in here or what? Help me, please. Help me, please. You know, it's, it's our responsibility. Listen, I'm here as your teacher, right? I'm your pastor. I'm your spiritual leader. I'm here teaching you to go do this. You see your brother, your sister going off doing that. You want to have koinonia, say, hey, repent of that. I, I want to have a relationship with you. You can't be living like that. You do it. You talk to them. Hey, and they say, so who are you? I'll just say, well, you want to know who I am? I am, I, am, I am a son of the living God, and he is my father, and I have koinonia fellowship with him every day. And boy, when you are doing that, there is boldness in your words, because it's real. It's alive. And when you have that kind of relationship with God, that kind of relationship is where God wants us to be. A relationship that has fellowship with him, koinonia and a relationship that has fellowship with each other. And what's the word? What's the word for, uh, it's koinonia. Koinonia. Think about it. Amen. So we're going to have communion, but we're going to do communion like this. We are all going to take our time and come up and have our communion on our own. We're going to put on some music, and we can fellowship. And this is a time for reflection for you. Just spend some time with the Lord alone, just, just you and God, and develop this koinonia with him and, and ask him, Lord, what, what's, what's really separating me from you? What's separating me from having this intimacy with, with you? Search my heart. And if he shows you anything, repent of it. Turn from it. Stop doing it. Stop doing it. And, and God will forgive you. And, and he will come upon you and empower you and make your life dynamic. Think about the Lord's Prayer. Allow God to minister to you with your relationship with other people. Allow God to show you how he is your provider of all that you need. Physical, your food, relational with other people. All of your needs, your relationship with him. Let's all stand. Let's all stand. Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Lord, your kingdom come and your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sin as we have forgiven those that have sinned against us. Lord, and lead us not into temptation, God. Oh my God, but deliver us from the evil one because it's for yours, Lord, is the kingdom. It's yours. Yours is the power. Yours is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless thee and keep thee. The Lord's face to shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. And be gracious unto thee, the Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and give thee peace.
God bless you all. Have a wonderful Jesus-filled day. Enjoy your communion with the Lord, the koinonia that you will experience as you take of the communion table today. God bless you.